Hello, today I will be covering 1.8a, which is other types of inequalities, specifically quadratic inequalities, okay? And so we know how to solve linear inequalities, but we're now going to stretch that beyond and talk about solving quadratic um, inequalities. So give me a second here. So to solve a quadratic inequality, such as this one here, x squared minus 2x minus 3 less than 0, you can use the fact that a quadratic or any polynomial can change signs only at its zeros. And zeros is a fancy word. We haven't learned it yet. But zeros is a fancy word for the x values that make the quadratic or the polynomial equal to 0, OK? Between two consecutive zeros, they're not the number zero, they're just these values that make the polynomial value zero. A polynomial must be entirely positive or entirely negative. This means that when the real zeros of a polynomial are put in order, they divide the real number line into intervals, which the polynomial has no sign changes. These zeros are the key numbers in the inequality. And the resulting intervals are the test intervals for the inequality. So essentially what it's saying is if I have a polynomial, the polynomial might look like this, or the polynomial might look like this, okay? And if I wanna know where um, the polynomial is greater than zero, that would mean when the y values are positive. So that would be this interval here, okay? Whereas if I wanna know when the y values are less than zero, like in this case, then I'm looking at this interval here. And this goes on forever, forever downward and forever to the left. So it's really from here and then the arrow, okay? And the same thing there would be from there and then to the arrow. Whereas if the polynomial were upward, then it's less than zero only in this certain interval right here. And it's greater than zero on these outer intervals, okay? So instead of trying to graph it, we can just figure out what the intervals are and then test the intervals to see whether or not it's like this where it's positive up there or negative down there, okay? Um, so, here we have, for instance, um, the polynomial above that we had, uh, it was x squared minus 2x minus 3. It can be factored into x plus 1 and x minus 3. And if you set that equal to 0, you can find the quote unquote zeros. Okay. So if I were to set this equal to 0, I would get this equation equal to 0 and this equation equal to 0. And that's where they got these two values from, okay? Um, so if you plot those values on a number line from smallest to largest, so if I draw my number line and I type negative one here, positive three would have to be somewhere down the line to the right, okay? Um, and then what we do is we basically created three sections, right? Before this number, in between the two numbers, and then to the right of that other number. Okay, and so if you want to write those intervals, this interval is from negative infinity to negative one. This interval is from negative one to three. And then this interval is from three to infinity. Okay, and why are we using parentheses instead of brackets? Because in the original inequality, it was this, which does not have a bar on it. And that's why there's no brackets here. It's just parentheses. And same thing there. There's no brackets there. There's only parentheses. So to solve the inequality, um, x squared minus 2x minus 3 less than 0, you need only to test one value from each of the test intervals. When a value from the test interval satisfies the original inequality, you can conclude that that interval is a solution of the inequality. You can use the same basic approach to determine the test intervals for any polynomial. Okay. 
Okay. So for example, it says in each test interval, we choose a representation representative um, X value and evaluate that X value. Oh, no, no, I skipped the page. I'm like, what's going on here? Okay, here we go. So we do need to do the whole summary of what to go, what to do. It says finding test intervals for a polynomial or quadratic. To determine the intervals on which the values of a polynomial are extremely negative or entire, entirely negative or entirely positive, use the following steps. Find all real zeros of the polynomial and arrange the zeros in increasing order from least to greatest. The zeros are, in, are the key numbers of the polynomial. Use the key numbers of the polynomial to determine the test intervals. Choose one representative x value in each tenth interval and evaluate the polynomial at that value. When the value of the polynomial is negative, the polynomial has negative values for every x value in that interval. When the value of the polynomial is positive, the polynomial has positive values for every x value in the interval. So, if we take this example, for instance, um, x squared minus x minus six less than zero. Okay, in order for me to figure out the solution to this, what we'll do is we'll, it's already in its standard form where you have everybody in decreasing order and you have zero on one side. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to factor that and we get this. And if we were to set that equal to zero, that is where the two key numbers from. X plus two equal to zero yields X equal to negative two and X minus three equal to zero will yield X equal to three. So then on a number line, we would draw our number line and between negative two and negative three, negative two would be on the left and three would be on the right. And if you notice with the markings, you have created these three sections. And then you're just putting those three sections into the intervals. Again, we do not have a bar under my inequality. Therefore, there's nothing but parentheses around my numbers, okay? So now we're gonna pick a representative number in those intervals. So remember what it looked like. Here's what it looked like. You had negative two and you had three. And it looks like the, int the x value that they're gonna pick over here is negative three. So negative three is the test value for that first interval from negative infinity to negative two, okay? And when I plug it into the whole inequality, we end up with three, negative three squared, which is nine, negative and negative would be plus three minus six is less than zero. Well, that's 12 minus six, which is six. So you're essentially asking yourself is positive six less than zero? And that's false. So I'm not sure why this is saying true. This is wrong. Negative three squared is nine. Negative and negative will give me plus and then minus six less than zero. No, I get positive. So this is not true. Um, I get six less than zero, but six is not less than zero. So this should not, the conclusion here should not be true. It should be false, okay? Then if I plug in a number in the middle here, we'll pick the number zero, right? You plug in zero into that original inequality. Now here I will get zero minus zero minus six less than zero. Ah, this one is negative six is less than zero. So in this case, this one is true. I've got one more. I know I saw a green pencil over here somewhere. There it is. So over here, we're gonna plug in a number on this side and it looks like we picked four. So you plug in four into your function 
and I'm going to get 16 minus four minus six. They're forgetting the minus six in there, um, which is actually 16 minus, that's gonna give you positive six. And positive six is not less than zero. So this is false, okay? So we tried all of the intervals um, and it turns out that the only the inequality is only satisfied for x values that are in this middle in, um, interval. Since this is where it came out to be true, this is the interval that will have the solutions in it, okay? So these words were backwards. I don't know why they were backwards, but they were backwards, okay? Um, and so then that's how you determine which intervals are gonna be your parts of your solution. So your solutions here is not just one number. It's a whole group of numbers that will meet the criteria, okay? Um, and it says down here at the bottom, it says this implies that the solution of the inequality x squared minus x minus zero, minus six less than or equal to zero, or just less than zero, sorry, is the interval negative two, three as shown below. So note that the original inequality contains a less than symbol. This means that the solution set does not contain the endpoints of the test interval, which is another reason why we didn't need brackets, okay? Actually, it is the reason why we don't use brackets. Now, As with linear inequalities, you can check the reasonableness of a solution by substituting x values into the original inequality. For instance, to check the solution that you found in example one, try substituting several x values from the interval negative two to three into the inequality. Regardless of which x values you choose, the inequality should be satisfied. So it's basically saying any number in there. I could pick negative 2.9999999. No, not negative 2.9. Negative 1.99999. Okay, that's real close to negative two. I could plug in this number. And then square it, subtract it, and then minus six. And I will end up with something less than zero, something negative. Negative 1.1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Store is my x, x squared minus x minus 6. And I get this value, and that value is less than 0 because it's negative. Negatives are less than 0. Okay. Now, let's see what the rest of the lesson says. It says, notice that the graph is below the x axis on the interval. So they went ahead and graphed the um, quadratic, which looks like this parabola here. And if you notice, when is it less than zero is when the y values are negative. And all the y values are negative in between that interval, negative two and three. So here are the practice problems. Number one says, solve the inequality and write your answer in interval notation. So it is already um, set with a zero on one side. So the next thing you would do is factor out the GCF, which appears to be two X. And then we're gonna go ahead and set that equal to zero so we can find those quote unquote zeros, right? So we have two X equal to zero x plus two equal to zero. So I get x equals zero, because zero divided by two is zero. And here I get x equals negative two, because zero take away two will be negative two. So then I'm gonna draw my number line, and the one on the left would be negative two, and the one on the right would be zero. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some test values. Okay, and I'm actually gonna write the intervals as well. So this interval is negative infinity to negative two. Now there's no bar on my inequality, so I'm gonna use parentheses. This interval is from negative two to zero, and this interval is from zero to infinity. 
Now, one, two, all three, or none of these may work. We have to do the test points to figure it out. So my test value over here, I'm going to say on that side would be negative three. Between negative two and zero, I would say negative one is in there, probably more toward the middle, but you get the idea. And a positive one would be over here in this region. OK, so I'm going to plug it into the original. 2, negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 less than 0. That's 2 times 9 minus 12 less than 0. 18 minus 12 less than 0, that's 6. This is a false statement, OK? What does that mean? It means that this interval is not part of the solution. Okay, now to test this point. So I get two times one minus four less than zero, two minus four less than zero. I get negative two is less than zero and negative two is less than zero. So this statement is true, which means this um, interval is part of the solution. Now let's go see if that one is as well or not, okay? So if I plug in one into the original equation, I get that six is less than zero and that's false. So that means that this interval is neither, is not a solution as either, okay? So what is the actual answer? The solution is gonna be the interval negative to zero. That is the solution. The interval is the answer. Okay, let's look at this one. Now, for this one, we have an issue because it doesn't have the zero, okay? And if it doesn't have the zero, then this shouldn't have been factored, okay? Because we're gonna have to refactor it anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first expand that left-hand side, and then we're gonna move over the one. So to multiply this out, I'm gonna end up with x squared minus six x plus nine. Now, if you were in the face-to-face -face class, you saw me explain the shortcut for this. Um, it's the same thing I would have um, ended up with if I would have uh, distributed, right? That's x squared, that's negative three x, negative three x, and then positive nine. And so when you combine these two like terms, you do end up with x squared minus six x plus nine. However, how did I do that so fast? All I did was square this guy, multiply these together and double it, and I got that. And then I squared the negative three and I got positive nine, okay? So it was basically x times x, x times negative three doubled. So negative three x times two is negative six x. And then negative three times a negative three, which is positive nine. And I just am able to do that faster, okay? Now, here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna minus the one over, so it's gonna become this equation when I subtract one on both sides. Then from here, I can factor. So x minus four, x minus two, those will um, multiply to give me positive eight, but combine to give me negative six. So then I'm going to set this equal to zero, each one. So X minus four equals zero, X minus two equals zero. I get the solutions four and two. So when I draw my number line, I'm gonna mark num two on the left and four on the right. Now I'm going to put my interval. So this interval is negative infinity to two, but this time my inequality did have a bar on it. So I am going to put a bracket. This interval is from two to four, and then this interval is from four to infinity. And so I need to test each section. So here, a number to the left would be zero. A number in between two and four is three, and then a number over here would be five. I could have also picked one. You could pick any number to the left. Now I'm gonna plug it into the original. You always have to go to the original. 
So zero minus three is just negative three. Then I get positive nine, and this is an actual true statement, okay? So that interval will be part of my solution. Now here, if I do three take away three squared greater than or equal to one, I get zero squared, which is zero. And zero is not greater than or equal to one. So this is a false statement, which tells me this is not a solution. Then now we move on to the last one. We get five minus three squared greater than or equal to one. This is two squared greater than or equal to one, which is four. And four is greater than or equal to one. So we get two true statements, which means that the solution is both of those pieces together. And so we learned in the section 1.7 that when both of them are part of your answer, you do need to tell the reader that both of them are part of the answer. And to do that, you use the union symbol. It tells you that these together make up the solution. And that is it. That is all I have for you for um, 1.8a. So that concludes all of the unit two material. So definitely make sure that you get your um, homework assignments done and then you do your um, test review, the unit two test review. It is inside WebAssign. And then once you are um, comfortable with that, you may take the test as soon as you're ready. It does have a, a deadline. So you do have to take it by its deadline, but you can always take a test early if you choose, okay? But I do hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.